Let's consider now what thermal conductivity depends on. We know very well from our life experiences that thermal conductivity depends on temperature. Some materials block heat transfer, meaning that they have a low thermal conductivity, while others facilitate heat transfer, meaning that they have a high thermal conductivity. Consider, for instance, a cup of coffee. That cup is generally made of a ceramic because the ceramic helps to block heat transfer, keeping your hands cooler. Whereas a frying pan is made out of metal because that metal has a higher thermal conductivity, which facilitates heat transfer and helps to heat up your food faster. Thermal conductivity can also depend on direction in a material. Here we're looking at the example of graphite. Graphite consists of sheets of graphene which are stacked on top of each other, as you can see here in this image. Each sheet of graphene has carbon atoms which are covalently bonded to each other, and those sheets are then stacked up on top of each other just like sheets of paper. This material is clearly anisotropic, meaning that it is different in different directions. And so it stands to reason that there will also be different values of K the thermal conductivity in each direction. Finally, we will consider how thermal conductivity depends on temperature. In this image, lava is hitting water, and that water is then vaporizing. And whether that water is in the liquid phase or in the gas phase impacts its thermal conductivity. And so we can see from this example that thermal conductivity depends on temperature. We will often simplify this situation by eliminating some of these dependencies. So for instance, we will often ignore the dependence of thermal conductivity on direction or on temperature and consider just how it depends on the material that we are looking at. Let's consider now what are typical values of thermal conductivity. We'll organize these from low on the left-hand side to high values on the right-hand side. Metals are among the materials that we encounter on an everyday basis that have the highest thermal conductivities, values typically of 50 to 500 watts per meter per Kelvin. The motion of electrons in these materials are responsible for the high thermal conductivity of metals. On the far left-hand side, we have gases. Gases typically have thermal conductivities of 0.01 to 0.03 watts per meter per Kelvin. Thermal conductivities are low because the collisions of molecules in a gas are rare, which acts to limit the rate of heat transfer. Liquids have somewhat higher thermal conductivities of 0.5 to 0.6 now that the molecules are in a condensed phase. These collisions occur much more frequently, which enables faster rates of heat transfer. Then we have insulators, like plastics which have thermal conductivities of 0.1 to 10. 